Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this HubMobile final seminar. We are pleased to have you all here, and today we have very interesting and topical presentations on the project themes. HubMobile Holistic Urban and Peri-Urban Sustainable Mobility Solutions is now nearing its end, and for Nearly three years, our objective has been to provide a holistic approach to the planning, implementation, optimization, and management of integrated sustainable mobility solutions in Baltic Sea port cities. I'm Tero Hahtela, researcher at Aalto University, and Aalto University is the lead partner in this project. So I'm also the project manager of this hub mobile, and it's been a pleasure to work with you through these three years while well, we have had some peculiar changes, but quite a nice challenge. And I think we have all done it very well. Uh, all our meetings in Hub Mobile have a host city, and this time it's Riga. However, due to this COVID situation, we were not able to arrange a physical meeting, nor even a hybrid one for the safety reasons. However, I know that we still have today an interesting online tour of Riga and its projects, um, what it has done and what is the future out. And I think that what could be a better host, because it's the 1st of December today and it's the time to open the first window of your advent chocolate calendar. And, and as you know, Riga is the home of the Christmas tree as the first record, written records of uh, decorated Christmas trees comes from Riga when some local merchant guild decorated the tree with some artificial roses more than 500 years ago. Uh, just before going to the agenda of today, uh, I want to say a few practicality words related to this meeting. Firstly, as you know, uh, we are recording this meeting so that the presentations will be available online afterwards, so that if you have to skip something, you can then go and see it afterwards, or if some of your colleagues would like to see it also. Uh, we try to uh, arrange it in a way that uh, none, of the, none of you would be shown there due to the GDPR reasons, and we won't uh, record any of the breakout rooms or discussions, so that it will adjust the presentations and the presenters. But if you feel that you don't want that, by even by accident, your face wouldn't show on the screen, then you can switch off the webcam, for example. And also, uh, just to avoid unnecessary noises and background voices, we suggest that everyone who's not speaking would close the microphone for that time. And also, similarly, while I think uh, we have very good connections in Europe, just, uh, just to play safe, I suggest that if you're not speaking, you would close your webcam. Uh, when we are in the breakout rooms so or in discussions, that's okay, but during the presentation so that we can ensure that everyone will see this very well. If you have any technical difficulties, please uh, send us a message via chat. So usually this Zoom is quite uh, trouble-free, but if there's something uh, with the voice or so we can help you. And of course, we wish to have today an interactive uh, session and discussion where everyone's able to share uh, their views and thoughts. So please use uh, this Zoom chat when it's there, uh, because we have, of course, separate uh, sessions for questions and answers and discussions. But uh, during the presentations, uh, it's already good to put down uh, what you think so that also others can see and then it's make it more fruitful, the following of the session. And of course, I also know that some, some of you may leave uh, behind the end of this meeting. So I already want to thank you warmly, every one of you, each partners and stakeholders for these years that we have had together, all the colleagues in this project, all the cities and uh, the representatives for your great contribution and commenting on our work and making it uh, practical. And also the other organizations have been uh, of so much help to us. And this is cooperation. Thank you very much of that. And of course, mostly also 
to the EU and the Secretariat for their support and answering our tedious questions and managing different changes related to COVID and uh, prolonging of the project. So special thanks go there to Attila Darabos and Lucas Korpal who have been always there for us. For, however, while even though this hub mobile project ends, these themes and of course partners will continue cooperation and probably also implement new services based on the lessons learned. So together we can improve the cities and their smart mobility in a sustainable way also in future. So even though the project would end, the themes will continue and will of course continue the cooperation. But now it's time to go for to just to go briefly, what is today's agenda? So, uh, first, after these welcoming words and practicalities, we continue with the first part of the seminar, holistic approach uh, to the port city transformation with the presentations from the host city of Riga. So we have introduction, and a virtual tour in the city with the current project and future outlook. Then after that, we have a keynote speech uh, from Sami Sahala from Forum Virium with the topic, Baltic Sea region cities are the drivers of the change. And then before the coffee break, I give a short introduction to our project and how things have gone during these years. And then after a short coffee break, we have another session, the second one, Hub Mobile, the road towards holistic mobility and planning. And that's where we have 10 short uh, presentations from the project partners, which tell briefly about what they have done uh, in the project and how our journey has been. And then after lunch, we have a session with more discussion and evaluations on what we have done. And to facilitate our minds, we also have another wonderful keynote speech from Lucian Sagan from Eurocities with the topic of design choice for urban mobility decarbonization, EU policies and local challenges. So welcome aboard everyone. Let's have an inspiring seminar day. And now I give floor to Inga Pelsa and the other representatives of the city of Riga. And we start an interesting virtual tour with Riga, with the current project and future out. So, Inga, the floor is yours. Good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning, friends from Hook Mobile. Uh, good morning, everyone who is interested in what uh, who we are and what we are doing. And I just remember that some three years ago, we met uh, for the first time in snowy Tallinn. And now we are meeting uh, Virtual, virtually, unfortunately, but in snowy Riga. But let me start uh, first with a short video. Okay, then. <laughs> But it was a short video just saying that uh, Riga sounds like adventure, uh, so it is adventure and we were intending to provide uh, uh, offer adventures in Riga to all of you. Um, we postponed the meeting for several times, uh, hoping that we will manage to meet all in Riga. Unfortunately, we couldn't do it, but we nevertheless would like to uh, get you uh, familiar with uh, our city and our project and uh, yes i forgot to introduce myself um, i'm inga pelsham i'm coordinator of the hoop mobile project at the riga energy agency and uh, we at the energy uh, at the agency have many a lot of uh, many uh, good ideas and uh, and plans to do but uh, you cannot uh, implement uh, any ideas and plans without support. And uh, we are lucky we have support in uh, the city council and we have a good political support. And so I'm very uh, honored and grateful to give now a word to the chairman of the Housing and Environment Committee of the Riga City Council, Edmund Zapuritis. 
So please, Edmund. Oh yes, thank you very much, and it's uh, it's a pleasure to be here and, and uh, have a bit of that energy from the project uh, coming our way. Uh, we are a uh, new city council. We have been working uh, a little over a year, and um, climate and, and environmental issues have really been into our focus, uh, largely because uh, they have been, in our view, and I'll say some uh, political statement, which I think could be well justified with facts, that these issues previously have been very much uh, neglected in uh, Riga city. So we have simply a lot of work to do in order to catch up. Uh, well, I guess in, especially in, in, in Zoom times, it's important to, to, to keep your uh, speeches short and maybe uh, have the most value per, per, per minute that we have to spend uh, looking at the screen. So I guess I'll focus on what is the most important role of polit politicians in, in these uh, discussions by specialists, which is to say that the work that you're doing is going to be used. We are very eager to, to look at the solutions, uh, both in mobility side of the project and also the participatory side of the, of the project and, and the tools you've designed and really put them to good use to, to achieve the goals that we are looking forward to. Uh, we have perhaps arrogantly put ourselves a sort of a target to make Riga the first climate neutral capital of the three Baltic countries. Uh, so I think our, our colleagues uh, here from, from, uh, from Tallinn and, and maybe elsewhere might, uh, might uh, take a, a small offense into that, but I think there's nothing wrong in that uh, small competition when, when it's the good goals that we're trying to achieve. And really this has been the approach that we are taking to mostly from political side look at where do we want to get and what kind of environmental and climate goals are we willing to set for ourselves. Even if setting those goals according to the latest climate science and the uh, latest UN reports seems uh, uh, very, very challenging and you could say impossible under the current circumstances and the current competencies that the municipality has. We are still taking this approach and saying that we first set the goals and then we defend the necessary extension of the powers of municipality or extending uh, or, or capacities and decision making to new kind of tools, new kind of financial tools and other kind of uh, instruments that can achieve those goals rather than to um, adjust our goals according to what is the current state of the municipality, what are uh, the current tools that we have at our approach. So yes, this is the kind of message I can at least send from, uh, from, from Riga that in political side, it is a very large priority to take the work that you're doing and put them in action so that we can create these new tools and achieve our, our climate and environmental targets. Um, the second part, I just, as I have previously worked in, in uh, environment, environmental education is, I just wanted to briefly comment that, especially in this area of mobility, the, the participatory approach, in, in my view, and, and of course there are probably better specialists here than, than me in this uh, case, in my view, it's very important to have this dialogue with the citizens because uh, if we compare uh, if we compare it to the to the other areas of uh, of uh, climate impacts, the energy sector, the, uh, the the agriculture, perhaps, then mobility is one of those areas where we actually need not only the the new uh, technologies and and the green transition, but also need quite a lot of uh, changes in in the way how people uh, think and what their habits are. And in all of these ways, it's very important that our, our plans as municipality go hand in hand with the perception and, and support by, by the people who live in the city. And I, I'm, I, I'm a strong believer in democracy and I'm a strong believer in, in, in inclusive decision-making and partic participation in decision-making. And I believe that's one of the strongest tools how to actually get the support. So yes, thank you very much for uh, 
coming together, uh, if not physically in Riga, then at least in, in that uh, spirit that we try to create. And I really hope that uh, the promises um, I have made, and of course, there's a lot of skepticism about the promises that politicians make, but I think uh, we have a good basis, <laughs> basis for them. I hope that these uh, promises can uh, uh, help you uh, sort of feel a, a larger meaning in your work as, as you you can uh, have at least uh, some level of, level of trust within Riga and I hope also in other municipalities and, and, and perhaps at the state level uh, this work is going to be put to use to, to create the real change and, and the change that we need in an environmental uh, lifestyle and other areas. Yes, it's really uh, nice to be here. I'll try to listen to some part of the program there's some uh, assistants of mine who, who are also be following some of them and definitely uh, may, maybe later also see some parts in recording so i'm very interested to to actually hear the, the results and ideas that are coming from uh, from your presentations so thank you very much for your uh, encouraging words and now I will give a word to our director, uh, Janis Ikonix, to tell more about uh, our works and, and deeds. Please, Janis. Yes, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, it's uh, a pity that uh, we really do not have the possibility to be together in, in physical meeting and uh, to show you the nice city of, of Riga. Uh, but uh, but I hope that uh, still uh, during the future cooperations we will have this uh, this ability uh, to to show you our, our city and uh, best practice examples uh, what we have here not only in mobility but also in in different point of views uh, in, in 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 the city. So I, I will show a small presentation about uh, more deeply about uh, Riga plants energy efficiency and. Uh, and our, our future. So let me share the screen. So it should be this slide. Uh, I hope that you, you see my presentation and I will um, express uh, and the, the next uh, next years in, in Riga City and also regarding what uh, Mr. Zaporit told about uh, Riga towards climate neutrality. We are really happy that uh, we have the possibility now to work towards uh, climate neutrality and and, and to to change things in, in Riga during uh, regarding climate issues. And uh, first of all, about uh, Riga city. Uh, so this is huge challenge uh, because about sixty percent of of total uh, uh, GDP and fifty percent of the population is is located uh, in in Riga or around Riga and uh, most of that also energy consumption is, is located here uh, therefore all Riga goals and, and targets are are directly connected with the aims of, of our country in general and uh, and this uh, is also one of the challenges what we have how we can can move towards climate neutrality and in the same time uh, reach uh, uh, increase in in in, in uh, population in economical activity businesses and, and and other things so this is what we have to uh, what we have to synchronize and uh, to be reasonable here but uh, our goals are are huge and ambitious and this is one of the topics which i will explain explain during the next next um, uh, next slides and uh, as you know, Riga is, is located uh, next to Bal Baltic Sea. So sorry, uh, next to the Baltic Sea, and uh, next to the Baltic Sea, and our uh, one of the uh, huge uh, changes has been uh, during the last years uh, with the new coalition that uh, we have uh, changed. Uh, approach from from uh, top to down uh, to to bottom up uh, and this is uh, very directly connected with the uh, with the uh, neighborhoods within the riga at the moment uh, it is separated 58 different neighborhoods uh, but I, today i looked at uh, in 31 of the neighborhoods uh, they have founded the association or union uh, which takes a part into the decision making how to develop and uh, how to make their neighborhood better and this is uh, one of the innovations how we as a city and municipality try to engage people within our our uh, local administration 
and and also that everybody within these uh, municipal uh, within these neighborhoods can take part and uh, and uh, implement uh, some of the the projects and uh, and make uh, their their local environment better. Uh, about Riga and uh, and the environment. So Riga was the first capital uh, in in in, uh, in Baltic states and uh, in in Latvia, first municipality to sign Covenant of Mayors Pact and uh, the Sustainable Energy and Climate Action Plan was developed in 2010, and in 2014 it has been um, uh, it has been uh, like uh, implemented with smart city uh, measures and, uh, and and the way towards smart city solutions. Uh, however, we had uh, good plans and, and ambitions, but unfortunately, as Mr. Saporitz uh, told already, that uh, not all of the actions were implemented and uh, there, there was a lack of uh, uh, climate uh, aspects and, uh, and, uh, and other measures which are still not, uh, was not implemented. But uh, during, uh, during this time period, the uh, Riga Energy Agency was founded and uh, we as an agency are, are responsible uh, for this sustainable energy and climate action plan, uh, not only planning, uh, but also monitoring implementation. And, uh, and, uh, and during the, this year, so as we developed new sustainable and climate action plan, we increased also our uh, uh, measures regarding climate is issues, adaptation, and, and also uh, calculating the baseline emissions for, for waste management, for, 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 uh, for forestry and uh, use of the land and, and other things that how we can look on these uh, issues uh, moving towards, uh, not only on an energy decarbonization, but also within the city in general. But uh, this project, Hope Mobile project, is really important for Riga Energy Agency, as you mentioned, uh, that not only uh, measures which have been developed and, and uh, mobility, but also from promote, promotion of these issues and, and engaging inhabitants and the rising awareness uh, towards climate neutrality, mobility and, uh, and, uh, and other issues. Uh, uh, during the, the, the new uh, coalition, uh, Riga City has uh, joined Paris Climate Declaration, and within this declaration, a municipality has developed a Climate Neutrality Commission, which is responsible for uh, implementation and uh, of, uh, of climate neutrality measures. And this is huge that uh, with uh, with uh, this plan and uh, moving towards climate neutrality, not only Riga Energy Agency or, or employees of the city, but also decision makers, uh, politicians are involved. And uh, the, the same is, uh, is very important for them. And, and the goal is, as Mayor uh, Mr. Uh, Stach told, uh, to be one of the first uh, 100 cities in, in, in Europe and uh, to be the first uh, climate neutral city in, in Baltic states, which also Mr. Separate uh, has subscribed to. And this is important for us. So uh, as, as we are uh, expressing that the ball is on our side and now we just have to implement all these uh, measures that pol politically it, it, we have a green light and we have to do everything what is in our power. Uh, regarding energy consumption of the city, we have uh, developed uh, this, uh, not only emission baseline, but also calculated all, all the energy consumption. And we can see that, mob, sorry, uh, that mob mobility is one of the biggest energy consumers, but also housing sector uh, consumes 31% of the total energy consumption in the city of, of Riga. And, uh, and third largest uh, energy consumer is service and, and the industry. And during the recent years, uh, from the energy consumption point of view, we do not see a large uh, decrease in energy consumption. Uh, maybe there is slight decrease in 2020, which is mostly uh, explained with, uh, with the pandemic and, uh, and uh, not all of the buildings were opened and, and a lot of energy consumption were decreased uh, in 2020.
So also um, moving towards uh, to 2030 and 2040 and 50. So we have uh, used 2019 as our baseline year to, to compare and to calculate uh, the, the possible uh, savings and, uh, and, uh, and measures. And uh, so, yeah. And as you saw from the energy consumption, our biggest challenge is uh, transport sector, which contributes to the large part of the CO2 emissions in, in total. So in previous slide, it was energy consumption. And the next slide will be the emissions. Uh, and uh, so uh, the transport sector has, has been uh, has been a huge challenge. And uh, therefore, we're very uh, glad that we had this possibility to, to be a part of the Hoop Mobile partner team. Uh, so also, uh, also within this uh, project uh, developed uh, um, all the knowledge we have implemented in our sustainable and, and climate action plan as, as the measures where we have to go forward and what we have to implement uh, in, in ports and in, in our uh, blue zones uh, to, to develop routes within the, within the city of Daugava to, to, to make public transport there and, 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 and other measures. And the second biggest challenge is the housing sector. Uh, although, although from the mission point of view, the emissions are not so much there, but uh, we have still about 6,000 buildings uh, need to be uh, renovated and are asking for, for deep renovation as the building sector is in poor technical and, uh, and uh, morally aged. So this is one also huge uh, priority in Riga Energy Agency in the city of, uh, of Riga. And the third part, I think it's also actual to, to all of the Europe is how we can move forward and implement renewable energy sources, which are beyond the uh, burning of biomass and, and wood, and how we can reach uh, net zero emissions uh, and uh, move to, to heat pumps, to solar collectors and, and other technologies, maybe which are not all, also present at this moment, but still are in the development phases. In, 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 in the market and uh, as we mentioned the mar the, the target uh, is to be yeah the first baltic uh, st baltic state and, and top 100 uh, city in in, in european uh, union uh, however we have um, developed uh, our uh, sub, sub target uh, to reach climate neutrality in 2030 within municipality infrastructure and, and this is the part where we as a municipality are uh, responsible for for energy consumption and where we as municipality pay for for energy for for transportation for for schools and kindergartens and this is what we where we want to test our methodology and uh, and to show the good practice examples to, to inhabitants and residents and to reach climate neutrality already in 2030 and 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 and, and uh, by, by doing this move towards also all, all city to the climate neutrality and develop both city vision where we can do, uh, where we can uh, subscribe to the energy efficiency and uh, and uh, climate measures how, how we will reach uh, this neutrality within 2040 or 2045 and uh, uh, till 2030 our goal is uh, to reduce emissions uh, by 72 uh, percent comparing with 1990 and this is the baseline for i think uh, most of the cities within the climate new uh, sorry within the covenant of mayors pact uh, but uh, so we uh, have developed also our baseline to, regarding 2019 and at the moment the target value are 25 percent and the city council infrastructure it's 100 percent to reach climate neutrality uh, already here uh, in uh, in the buildings and the street lighting and all the, the sectors where we can make the decision and make this uh, to happen quite fast so sorry sorry uh, i have to yeah uh, and uh, how we are doing this, of course, the projects uh, are uh, helps us a lot. And, uh, and Hope Mobile was one of the projects uh, uh, which uh, which developed also how we can engage inhabitants and how we can uh, can work with uh, with our, our uh, ports and, and rivers. Uh, but uh, also we have other projects and, uh, and uh, I was asked to, to sh shortly tell about them. And uh, so we are a partner also in ongoing project, 
project at OER where we are developing this uh, cities for zero methodology using to, to develop our bold uh, city vision. And this is where we can, uh, we will be able to say at which year and how we will uh, reach climate neutrality within the city in, in general not only in uh, city uh, municipality infrastructure and uh, and uh, we will start to develop this uh, already starting from the next year and uh, the most important is that uh, we integrate all the, the environmental policies and and city planning which is which is very important not only to, to use the technologies but also how to plan city to to implement uh, velo infrastructure and and other other um, uh, solutions how we can can reach these uh, measures another project is european city calculator which which will be used uh, to 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 use uh, modeling tools uh, how we can evaluate uh, our sustainable energy and climate action plan and and bold city vision so this uh, this use um, more uh, macro modeling uh, tools uh, that we can can look on on our budgets and our uh, people and and other impacting factors and and uh, to evaluate whether the uh, whether the uh, measures uh, are, are 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 can be uh, implemented, and uh, so and another ongoing project is uh, e energy, where we are developing a municipality urban data repository. Uh, this is important for us that uh, we would like to use this uh, tool uh, to show everybody. Uh, to show our residents uh, the data and to use this as uh, as uh, awareness raising tool and also uh, to uh, to use them to for for uh, data driven uh, decisions which is not happening uh, uh, quite often uh, at the moment and uh, so uh, we have had uh, other projects but the, the these are maybe most important and which are also uh, ongoing at the moment uh, some others are are still uh, in the in the end phase or, or uh, are still in uh, in uh, the, the agreements are not signed but uh, from, from from recent activities uh, i would like to say that uh, during the last six months so within the rig energy agency we are also working with implementation of energy management management system within the municipality that how we can reduce not only energy consumption but also emissions uh, within all our public infrastructure so we are developing this bold city vision uh, so we have developed also one stop shop for for residential buildings how to renovate the buildings and that the residents have this uh, one support place where they can come and uh, to 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 be serviced uh, starting from the idea till the end of the building renovation and uh, during the next year we're planning to to add more services and also some financing uh, and uh, this is, I think, huge support. And uh, then, uh, so we have had uh, during this year a pilot project for construction material exchange point. And this is, this was very interesting for us to see how residents um, uh, so, uh, use their leftovers from construction works and uh, uh, give to this uh, material exchange point, uh, and that some other uh, people use this. And uh, so we try to evaluate how how such kind of project can be implemented uh, during the next years. And uh, and so I think that these are most most important uh, recent activities. Uh, just for you to to understand uh, activities of uh, Rig Energy Agency. So I think I, I, I talked a little bit longer than than I supposed to do. Uh, so thank you for your attention. Uh, so I have still one more uh, uh, one more. Um, uh, video material from our team uh, so the team really would wanted to be here with you so i would like to uh, give you the best regards for from them to, to to you i hope you have the ability to to see this so can you please say whether you hear the presentation we see it but we do not hear it so sorry so some slide once more so should be now Hello, 
My name is Evi Peritsi. I'm deputy director in the Riga Energy Agency and project manager. Here I'm standing next to the Geilezers, one of the three lakes in Meštijens district. Meštijens is one of the nicest and greenest places to live in Riga, as it is surrounded by the forest. Nice to meet you. Hi, my name is Nika. I'm Atelier project coordinator. And this is Sara. She is our senior expert for urban environment. I am Valdis Ratnix. Uh, I'm responsible for energy uh, management in Riga city. And I'm standing here on top of the highest hill of Riga, Dzagush Counts. Uh, hi, greetings from Riga neighborhood <coughs> in Anta. My name is Mara and uh, currently I'm working at Riga Energy Agency uh, in the field of environmental management and now I am involved in several projects, example Atelier and EU City Calc. Hi, my name is Jani Sandins and I'm sustainable transport and mobility expert. Welcome to Riga! one of the oldest gardens of Riga and uh, my interest of work is the energy and big data project. Hi, my name is Eva Kalnin and I'm the coordinator of the project Urge Circular Building City. Right now we are at Meja Park Great Bandstand and my field of interest is circular economy and everything about it. I'm Inga, I'm project expert at the Riga Energy Agency and I am also coordinator of the Hubmobile project. And here I am by our river Daugava, our destiny river as we call it, and with a view to our railway bridge and the old city behind me. Hope to see you here one day. So, okay, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I hope that you had the possibility to feel a little bit uh, that uh, you are present in, in Riga and uh, that uh, that uh, you will uh, be informed a little bit uh, what uh, what kind of sites you need to see when you are when you are visiting so thank you very much and uh, i give uh, the word back back to you oh thank you Yanis. and uh, yeah i hope that you at least uh, could meet us uh, virtually <laughs> online and next time we definitely meet in person and we will show you all these nice places so i think that's 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 it from riga side and uh, we can go back to the serious work of hoopenbell Tero? thank you very much uh, of course this is also uh, serious work and actually uh, you had also one uh, good question in the chat which was that uh, have you used a uh, pandemic situation to support uh, active mobility? For example, have you built pop-up bike lanes or so, or what kind of, uh, yes, what have you done uh, or planned? Uh, 
Mm -hmm. So, yeah, thank you for the question. So, first of all, I think that I, I really would like to express that the climate neutral city by 2030, it's it's only the, the municipality infrastructure. So, this is not all, all of the city. And uh, this, this is uh, the part where we as municipality are paying for, for the energy. So this, uh, this doesn't include the residents, the, the companies and then the and, and, uh, private transport and, and these things. But uh, so we are really uh, looking forward how, how to do this also faster than 2050. But uh, regarding the, the question, have you used the pandemic situation? I think that uh, uh, of, uh, that this this has been used, but uh, in uh, during the last last year, uh, at, uh, well, one one year ago, uh, the the vehicle lanes and and uh, and um, mobility support was was very very low, and I think that uh, what uh, new city council is doing, it's uh, it's already huge changes for for the city, and uh, this happened also within the, the pandemic. Uh, so it's very hard to say uh, what was uh, decision driven by by the pandemic and what was decision driven by by new city council looking forward uh, sustainable mobility and, uh, and other issues so i think it goes hand in hand that this was the possibility to to change the things but also other other measures were were, were very important to be implemented uh, uh, without or or with the pandemic that that wasn't maybe the the, the decision uh, because of the pandemic so i i hope that i answered to your question thank you Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you, Riga, for that video. I think everybody was smiling, probably at least I was. That was that was a great one. Uh, hold on, let me share my screen. Uh, in the meanwhile, uh, let me introduce myself. Uh, Sami Sahala from Forum Virium. And for those who don't know, Forum Virium is the, uh, let's say, in-house innovation agency of video Helsinki. I think now you can see my screen, I hope. Um, so, so we are uh, technically a daughter company of City of Helsinki, but non-profit. We uh, do not work on the market. Uh, we are more or less the propeller heads who try and fail first. I always like to say it that way because it links to the, the startup uh, movement, the, the ambitions of, of also of, of the City of Helsinki regarding startups. So we try to uh, walk the talk and behave like that ourselves as well. Uh, and then that means that we also, uh, well, part of what we do is is, is uh, help city uh, with the European R&D projects. Uh, quite often means that we do it, everything on behalf of the city, but that's our job. But enough for me, um, other than another point is that those who know me, I don't usually go to be too philosophical, but I thought I'd try it this time um, because I was thinking about the, the title given to the, this keynote, the cities are drivers for change. So I'll, I'll try to be a little bit more philosophical. What does it actually mean? Uh, so to me, being something that, or trying something that, that I don't normally do is also linking to, to, to the drivers of, of chain, change. So, so it's uh, it's it's always good to you know get out of that box every once in a while, beyond your comfort zone and and, and try new things. So no guarantees, but let's see what what I get out of this. Uh, so let's move on. Really, a simple slide first. Uh, the title that cities are drivers for change, and uh, we hear this quite often. Uh, but sure, we are here in the mobility context. So, what what is that change? What what, what is needed? And and there's always change in different roadmaps. We are always targeting some kind of change in 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 our strategies. Uh, but it's always good to go back uh, to to the basics. That what are we doing here? What are we trying to achieve here? And and how are we going to do it? So that's basically how I try to, to look into this, well, the topic of this keynote. Uh, it's easy enough to answer from mobility perspective. This is an old slide I've been using quite often. Uh, these are the main targets for any city. Uh, 
the climate congestion comfort comfort meaning convenience for local stakeholders residents uh, in terms of new services everything works smoothly that kind of stuff um, we always say that cities are a little bit different and quite often we say that they're a lot of different it's not enough not easy to to uh, cooperate and, and scale things and, and just copy paste something that, that you've done in Riga to just drop it in Helsinki. Of course, it doesn't work. But at the same time, doing this, this cooperation, doing these projects together with different cities, we've also learned that, that actually there's, there's uh, quite a lot of similarities. We are not that different. We are different at the same time. It's easy enough to, to find common ground, uh, common challenges. Uh, and, and they don't change that much, actually. So we should focus on those. Um, with with the current times, I, actually, I, I think I should upgrade this slide with the, yet one more C. Let's call it commerce. So the economic side of things is becoming more and more important at the moment in every city, in every country. Uh, other cities, say different uh, authorities, like for example, public transport is struggling everywhere. Uh, so that is now a new driver uh, and also a new target that we need to address um, within everything we do related to change. Um, so how do we do it? Um, before going there, another part of my, my philosophical quest here is that, that are we really drivers? Uh, what does it mean to be a driver? Okay, that's easy enough to answer. Uh, just take the first C over there, that was the climate. Uh, in every city, urban mobility is, is a big part of, of the, uh, the, the emissions, the, the greenhouse gases. Uh, not just that, there's, there's all kinds of, of uh, the negative side effects that 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 urban mobility causes for us it's 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 air quality it's it's dust it, different things uh, not just the, the the greenhouse gases themselves and of course noise safety all that something that that we've been discussing lately in helsinki as well uh, regarding some of the new uh, decisions on on on, on further uh, mobility development uh, another point here is that, that quite often cities, Helsinki as well, uh, we, we think that, that, well, do we have to be active? What if we just sit back and wait? Time will solve this issue. Or time, time or sometimes let's say national level decision making or, or European level decision making. Do we really have to, to react? At least not be proactive. Well, that's partly true. Um, things do evolve. Things do go on even without cities taking any action. Um, but then again, that change may not be exactly what we would have wanted. So in terms of mobility, that might mean a different kind of policies basically being given to us from, from somewhere above that, that we are not comfortable with. It may result in, in side effects that, that would not be there if we did react in uh, early enough. So clearly there's, there's a need that, that we need to be in a driving seat, so to speak. Um, and, and, and see that, that what is it, in, in each case, what is a sensible role for the city to have and to take? It's not that we always need to do everything. We definitely shouldn't do everything. But every time estimate that, that what does it what, what makes sense for us to do in this case regarding the future? So it's a little bit of crystal ball work uh, every time as well. Another thing that that so if we are a driver for change, what, what does it mean? Um, quite often it is it, it said that that the driver should demonstrate and show and then teach the others that, that this is uh, how things should be done. Could be demonstrating innovation, new, new solutions, kind of 
not lead by example. At the same time, change can happen uh, by other triggers, by other drivers as well. Um, basically, it's just, just it, you can order change to happen, meaning regulation. And every country, every every city uses that as well. There's hardly any change that will happen without any level of regulation having some part in it. Another way to do that is by using money. Here it means, in this context, it means using public money, uh, thinking of a uh, procurement, for example, quite often it means procurement. And then just the, the fact that, that using money in a different way causes different type of, of result. Sure, that's a change and then, then money or, or the way how to use money is the driver for the change. And then another point, what it means to be a driver or how you do that is um, something that we come across well way too often in, in related to smart cities or smart mobility. There's quite often there's a, a city or, or a company saying that, that well, we do smart mobility and we are good at it. And the only fact that that proves it is that because they say so. And sometimes that's, that, that works as well. When you repeat something often enough, it becomes reality. Good. But it also kind of creates the image of, of this is what we want to be. And, and if you really start believing that this is what you want to be in terms of like driver for change, then actually it be, does become true and then you start to act accordingly. So that sometimes it makes sense to first advertise and then, or sometimes first even sell and then think of, of how do you actually then de deliver. So that's another way of looking at it. But here's my main point. Um, when thinking that, that we, we do have common challenges and we do have common ground in, in everything we do within, say, the Baltic Sea cities, uh, or Baltic Sea region cities. Um, maybe one point here especially is that, that what I'm trying to say with that picture here on the right as well is that already our voice is being heard. Let's put it that way. Uh, people elsewhere, they, they look up to us. In a way, that's kind of easy. We are always on the top of the, the maps, but, but still, they, they look up to us. And then the reason for that is that we have been able to demonstrate this change. We have been showing that, that we can be agile, we can, we can do things maybe more quickly, in a, in a more clever way than, than elsewhere. And that is one of the biggest assets that we have as Baltic Sea region cities. And we really, really should not forget that, and we should utilize that as best we can. Another point that I had in mind actually came from, from listening to, to Riga's presentation is that one thing that we, in order to do any change, in order to, to have a significant impact on anything, I think one of the main things we need to have first is, is a will and a mindset that, that yes, we can do it, which Riga was really clearly demonstrating that that was that was uh, really good to, to see and hear uh, that, that you, you have the ambition to set goals, set them high and, and uh, push forward and, and we all need to do that. And then my point is that we need to do that together whenever and wherever we can. Um, I've listed here a few of the strengths, so just from the top of my mind, uh, clearly not all, not everything. But, but maybe something that in the future we should look into and, 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 and use and again utilize together uh, when, when we, whenever we do and take the next steps uh, in terms of driving the change. Uh, first of all, the Baltic Sea itself, it's something that we should use. Um, we have here cities, not all the cities are by the sea, but actually most, most are. Uh, and, and, and that's a already kind of ecosystem you can't really have and in a similar format at least anywhere else in, in Europe not too easy to, to find elsewhere in, in, in the world as well and we are not using that fact 
to our advantage as much as we can in terms of change, in terms of new innovation, in terms of say, establishing and, 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 and driving uh, our cooperation. Uh, some, some of the basic stuff is that, yeah, yeah, sure, we are digitally advanced. Every one of us, countries, societies, cities, um, um, so it's easy to, to use that digitalization to our advantage. Let's use it even more. And, and I'd say mostly, nothing's ever black and white, but mostly we are quite pragmatic. Uh, we are able to concentrate and focus on, on the goal which is realistic, which is clearly defined, and, and then we are able to work towards it. Uh, again, but something... You know, that... Sorry? Okay. So that's one thing to, to, to use. Uh, then when I said that, that we that we are being heard, is that, that part of it is that we really have a good image. And we do have especially mobility context, we do have this status of, of being the forerunners. We come up with new ideas, we, we come up with new concepts, we, there's a new technology coming up first from here quite often, uh, or at least we are able to put it into actual real life use first, quicker than anyone else. Another point kind of related to what I said at first is that, that we, we are quite strong in the startups. So it's, the rest of the world is picking up as well, but still we do have something unique going on here uh, and, and still have it. Uh, there's a plus uh, event going on in Helsinki as we speak. Even even with, with the COVID and everything, it still seems to be a big hit this year as well. So uh, let's uh, not forget that. We, there's still plenty to, to uh, kind of utilize that one as well. And then city as the, uh, the, the platform, that's the term that, that we often have used in Helsinki. That, that how can we, the cities, be a platform? How can we enable that change, that, that new development? And then there are different ways how to, to, to look into it. Uh, but, but some of the kind of, I, I see that this fairly common at least fairly common is that, that we do have we are quite good at bureaucracy and uh, there's well obviously there are differences in different countries and, and cities but it's been improving a lot everywhere uh, i see that so that means that it's easy to come and, and start developing some start piloting start some actual new service uh, in, like commercial service even so never Never let's uh, let, let's keep that and never never lose that. It it is a big advantage and and, and quite often mentioned by the rest of the Europe. Uh, I see over the last few years, especially there are many many good attempts on 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 and good initiatives how to use the public money differently. So innovative procurement and like for example, uh, driven by Tampere, the the city of Tampere in in Finland. The, uh, some of the new procurement models, like the, the Alliance model, it's, it's been basically copied from Australia, again, as first one in, in, in Europe, and been perfected, and it, it's proven to be really a really efficient one. A really different way of, of uh, using public money when we are doing especially big construction projects. And one main point that, that I like to stress from Helsinki perspective is that, that we are cooperative. We, we, have proven that that sure everyone every city is doing different kind of process together but but here in this corner of europe we see that that we have been able to push that much further uh, and then there's lots of, of good good uh, results coming from that and it's it's always uh, kind of feeding into new ideas new development so it's it's kind of loop that feeds itself and, and, and that's something that we should be focusing on even more in the future and together with this, there's plenty to, to improve in that regard among the, the, uh, the Baltic Sea region cities. Again, we've been doing quite a lot, but, but still, let's, uh, let's focus on that much more. Um, just a few remarks I, I picked up uh, uh, related to what I just said, we, we had um, one national project uh, program 
of six Aika, or for the six biggest cities in Finland. And, and it's it's been a hit. It it's it's deeds are so much. It it it's it's uh, generated so much new innovation, new ideas, and as well as the cooperation has been something that it it, it clearly wasn't there before the six Aika program. And we really it it uh, ending now, and and we are really hoping that that it will continue continue in some form. But a couple of, of points is that, that what we've learned uh, through this program, as well as, as the other activities over the last years, is that we can work much better in cooperation with, with, with the business sector, with the private sector. And, and everybody is, is, is winning uh, and getting something out of it. it it's, Clearly, it's been a win-win for, for all, all the stakeholders who have been involved. Um, for startups, especially, that they, they are happy to, to get that kind of a stamp on, on what they, whatever they, they are producing and selling in the future. Hey, this being co-created with this city, or, or we got this this backing from that city, even though the backing actually means that, that we've just done something together there. It doesn't mean that we are investing in them or anything, but we trying to find different ways of how to help the business sector because in the end that's what our, the mayor in every city wants that that there's new business in your city to be honest and then that's in in uh, in mobility context there's great potential we've already seen that and and, and it's still building up so uh, again one key point to really grasp and, and use in the future another Point is the, the uh, cooperation between cities. Like I said, we, we, we've always been doing that, but in a different way and, and not nearly as, as hands on that that's now been we've been doing in, in well in Finland among the six biggest cities, but at the same time what we've been doing among different European forums as well. Uh, to name something like, for example, the EIT Urban Mobility is, is, is and at the City Club, how the whole program is, is kind of built around the cities and cities needs that, that are the drivers for, or then the funding for, for companies to come up with new innovation and new solutions. And, and, and that has then been pushing our cities to talk more, to find the common challenges. And, and that's been a really good exercise in that way. Yeah, there's plenty else to say about the IT, and especially with the new uh, news about it. But 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 the, the uh, different ways of putting cities to to sometimes by force, but sometimes by by some some uh, intriguing goal, but just pushing cities to work together. We have seen a lot of a lot of uh, advantages with that. Again, let's use that in the future. That's my message. And, and what about the future? Well, it always been described as this busy and, and confusing, like the, the picture in the background. And, and maybe it is. But those points that I mentioned uh, about the strengths that we have, and the, it's kind of an asset that we have, and using that and, and, and putting in the next year and then keep on accelerating. I think that is something in the context of, of this, this keynote, uh, the title, it, it's something that we need to do. And, and uh, just a last reminder, let's utilize these new uh, programs. All of this, it's, we, I just put the, the interex here, the couple of ones that are most uh, uh, important for, for us in the Baltic City region. But there's the new program uh, for, for Horizons. There's, there's plenty of new opportunities. So it is kind of a milestone moment, uh, kind of a new momentum coming up uh, for, for further cooperation, further projects uh, to do together. And then there's quite often I see embedded in, in these new programs that, that they are also, they want us to do more cooperation between cities, which then is it's not just cities do something together, but, but cities together again, form the platform for new universal for research and for new uh, companies to do. So this is kind of a reminder that, that say next year is, is a start of something new and we should 
not lose that uh, opportunity. Uh, with that, that was my philosophical try of, of looking into this topic. I am not something I do often, but, but I think it's sometimes good to even try that. Thank you. This is us uh, before COVID times, obviously. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sami. Uh, we are inspiring presentation. And now we have uh, time for some uh, questions and discussion. And we already have here in the chat box. Some of them, I don't know whether you, Sami, see them. But, no, I uh, do. Yes. So, for example, and this was also like a question to you and also to the others from Heike Bunte that uh, what do you think uh, are mayors for the whole process of change anymore or should be more focused on the grassroots um, movements? So, I think we need to do both. Uh, so, I think Heike continues that, that um, yeah, we need to kind of, kind of balance. Yes, we need to address all levels. Um, we need to have the support from from the from the top. There's um, a good example of of what happens when you don't do that. Uh, Barcelona used to be the kind of the number one smart city in the world, and they got a new local government, new mayor, who basically ordered to to drop all kind of stupid, unnecessary stuff, meaning that all smart city development was basically cut off. And later realized that that wasn't really a wise thing to do and it took them a few years to build back uh, so that clearly is a key thing to have support that that new innovation changed but also that means that you need to get some guidelines as well it's not just sometimes it, it it's good to to have the goal of, of just change something new innovation that should spark something and and, and, and that's enough but whatever we do uh, in terms of innovation whatever we do in in terms of uh, development in mobility it always that's not the goal itself it, it always leads to some kind of vision some kind of, of uh, goal of the, the whole society whole whole city and and we should always work towards that goal obviously and then that needs to come from the top at the same time grassroots uh, i think there's two, two actually uh, points in there. Um, well, the city organization itself, quite often, we, you all know, just admit it, city organizations are rigid, not too flexible, uh, sometimes outdated in, in, in some of the processes, some um, ways how they, they work, because that's basically what they've been doing for decades and decades, and just understandable. So, it, whatever we do in terms of new innovation, new development, change, it needs to, you need to address that level as well. What does it mean for them? Uh, and there's quite often there's there's a little bit of resistance that you can you can notice, and uh, that may come from fear of, of unknown. Does it affect somebody like will I lose my job or something? That can happen in many different ways, starting with. Uh, Autonomous buses that, that bus drivers are thinking that, and and and, and some of the uh, say, grassroots workers as well as politicians think that, that well that's not good. We shouldn't have automation because then we have people losing their jobs. But at the same time, we should then go back several hundred years and, and not have any automation. But then everybody would be happy because everybody would have their jobs. But obviously, that's not the way to go. Uh, the society will have to change, and that that will happen. But the other point is is the uh, let's call it citizen engagement, citizen participation, involve the local stakeholders, not just the residents, but but local companies, all that. In whatever we do, uh, in planning, that the say normal processes that that city is doing, um, I think citizen participation in that that manner has has been going on for years for many cities plenty to do there, uh, especially with the, with the new uh, technology helping that. But the other, well, for us, the big thing here has been the living lab type of approach. We've been doing that for, for many years um, and, and really successfully. So basically what we do is, is we try to, and that's our job, to kind of 
take the, uh, the role of the citizen. We go to talk to them. We get to know them. They get to know us. Uh, and, and then we are then kind of a bridge between the city and them. And, and everything we do, for example, in our pilots and our projects, is targeted mostly towards helping the life of the local resident or the local stakeholder, not the city organization. So I think that that is equally as important and, and you could even say that that is the most important thing for us, at least it is. Okay, thank you for your answer. And then uh, there was another question. Uh, how do you think and how do you think that the cities uh, consider uh, are these uh, new initiatives like 100 climate neutral cities rather a driver or uh, for change or rather a burden for? Yeah. Uh, there are so many new initiatives coming up all the time. <laughs> that they, in that way, ev everyone is, is a burden. Um, it's a burden also in a way that, that then you need to, to look into them and see you can't possibly join everyone and everything and, and uh, be active participant in, in everything. You need to find your do your homework, find the ones that are most uh, important for you, work with them. Or again, just don't just sit back and let the other cities do. But then then that that's a choice. And and I say that that the change and, and, and all the acceleration and everything that, that we and, and most cities and, and mayors want, it requires that we do cooperate, we participate in different kind of forums. Um, sometimes it makes sense to, to participate in some of these ones, sometimes it makes sense to form your own one. And, and I would say that in this context, context that we are talking about, it might make sense that we increase our cooperation between the Baltic Sea region cities uh, to some level, not, not just do projects together, but sit down and think that, that what should we do, what, what should we aim together for, right? what should we have some common goals, and then work around uh, the projects around them. That would be my, uh, my suggestion. Increase the, our cooperation. Thank you very much, Sami. Uh, are there other questions or comments you would like to raise? Uh, now I'll introduce uh, you briefly uh, what has been our Hub Mobile project. And this is like the background story for our other 10 uh, shorter presentations related to the results. Uh, what we are, how we have gone here, and as you know, this hub mobile, hub mobile project name comes from holistic urban and peri-urban mobility. And we are a project in the Interact Baltic Sea region's third call for proposals in innovation, natural resources and sustainable transport. Uh, our project started in the beginning of 2019 and it will end at the end of this year. Uh, our total budget for this project uh, is around 2 million euros, of which European Regional Development Funding is 1.5 million euros. And here you can see all the uh, partners in our project, the city of Turku, city of Hamburg, and also the cities of Tallinn and Riga. And then we have also knowledge partners, Aalto University, uh, Royal uh, Academy or Kunglika Technische Hochschule, Union of the Baltic Cities, uh, Sustainable Cities Commission and ITL Estonia. And of course, because this is an interact project, it's about learning together, transferring knowledge and increasing capabilities in sustainable holistic urban mobility by cooperation of the cities together. And of course, uh, as an indirect, this is a wonderful policy learning uh, program uh, for public authorities, because these are great uh, opportunities for uh, information about funding uh, for new projects. Uh, 
uh, finding project partners uh, with similar interests as we are here, about exchanging our ideas and then about experiencing and learning together. So this is a very good uh, platform and ideal for cities and other public authorities for interregional cooperation. So uh, here are the hub mobile goals, which we defined in the beginning. So the objective is to provide a holistic approach to planning, implementation, optimization, and management of integrated sustainable mobility solutions in Baltic Sea port cities. And in this case, we mean with mobility, both people and goods. So freight, cargo logistics, and delivery also. And we have concrete examples of innovations addressed, of course, because we want to be very practical, uh, how to improve uh, greener urban logistics, how to combine uh, goods and passenger traffic, because we are in the port areas, how to utilize better uh, intelligent traffic systems instead of uh, just making new infrastructure, and what kind of services are related there. How can we improve uh, in practice the stakeholders and citizens' participation? So how to both improve the tools and the whole stakeholder processes related to these developing things. And of course, uh, also, we want to put uh, emphasis on mobility as a service, but not just uh, from the viewpoint of people, but also from the viewpoint of the goods because we consider that if the goods would also move better, it would mean that people would be less dependent of the cars. And of course, uh, as also Sami mentioned in the keynote speech, which also holds for us, the hub mobile partner cities, uh, we are port cities and much of the prosperity comes and identity comes from that. And of course, these ports are very often close to the city centers, either by the seaside or or on the river. And we also know that people would like to live uh, close to the city center, of course, uh, due to the services, but on the other hand, also by the front water front line, if possible. And therefore, these new residential areas very often are built close to the harbors. And yet again, also the companies would like to be located in these very good places, increasing this commuting and mobility needs there. And also because there are, of course, uh, ferries and cargo ships coming, it means that traffic increases significantly and is intermittent. And this causes challenges to the harbor and the city center areas. And the existing infrastructure just can't stand it. And therefore, we need to find uh, better and new ways and solutions to solve and mitigate these troubles so that it's possible also for the residents to live in the city areas and these new areas close to harbors. So uh, here are uh, what here are the activities and what we have done. And firstly we have been we have done uh, research and practical uh, solutions for improving uh, products and logistics and urban logistics. Uh, the purpose has been, and we have developed, a uh, planning approach and tools focusing on the flow of goods in the urban areas. Then we have also had uh, practical participatory simulation uh, models and tools, which analyze the in and out about traffic flows and their interaction and impact on the other transportation flows in the area. Then we are, of, of course, taking into account the needs of residents and other stakeholders. The purpose is, of course, to understand the overall situation in passenger traffic by looking everyday mobility of the residents and traffic flows from passenger ports and commuting to the companies in the port area so that we can find such solutions that fit everyone and not just one of these different stakeholders. And as one of the one uh, solution is that we use better uh, and utilize the potential of intelligent transport system solutions and therefore also the supporting mini pilots. So
So the purpose is to match this public sector uh, challenges with uh, private sector competencies and by utilizing different intelligent transport systems. And also as part of this project has been development of a international uh, competence network or ITS network uh, for the Baltic Sea and ensuring that the cooperation uh, will, we have more cooperation and interaction in that field because it's one of the key uh, player, key roles and players that can change the future. And of course, uh, to have more of these mini pilots and uh, trying to take new activities, uh, we have had experimental uh, policymaking mini pilots and which show the roadmap and how and why to develop these into real pilots or services. And of course, uh, we have also uh, have, uh, themes related to multimodality in urban transport to support uh, multimodal transportation and to increase the utilization of the existing infrastructure to reduce the dependency of private cars. And related to that, we have also developed an impact assessment of new transport solutions and tools for estimating uh, how the existing uh, and tried and true good uh, solutions could fit and be transferable to other regions. So, uh, as also Inga uh, member remember that we started this project nearly three years ago and we first met in the port of uh, Tali and we were discussing the these themes and uh, what are the troubles and also what we have so far achieved uh, different cities in this field to improve the situation and then we and we were making there uh, the guidelines and the steps forward to us uh, how we can continue our work and then uh, half a year, less than half a year from that, after a few months, we had a meeting at Alta University. And there we were, we were already uh, planning the practical steps, what we will do. For example, here in this picture, uh, we were planning uh, how we could, for example, in, take into account the companies and their, uh, and the needs of their employees to get to their working place. And also sharing the ideas of what kind of benchmarking and what are the what are the most important fields where we need uh, feedback and knowledge from uh, other cities to develop our own activities. And much, of course, was planned, and uh, we were very much thinking in those days that we could still travel to other cities and we would keep their workshops and we would be able to collect data and meet all the stakeholders uh, related to uh, different themes because of course our our aim and purpose has been the holistic approach meaning that we take different aspects and also therefore different stakeholders into account and with that in mind uh, this is the picture from Södertälje from December 2019 so just before the COVID uh, started and as you can see, we have their post-it uh, post cards and we were developing there and trying the impact assessment uh, tool together with the cities and developing it further. And that is actually uh, how we have uh, many things uh, to be implemented and everything was ready to be done in that uh, traditional way. But then, unfortunately, this happened everyone knows uh, this COVID situation. And instead of being able to uh, meet and do the cooperation face-to-face, uh, -face, we had to change more and more of our activities to network. And I have to say that Zoom has been our best friend uh, nearly for two years right now. Uh, it was quite a struggle in the beginning because we had all everything already planned together with the companies and others and cities. And therefore we had to do some changes, partly also drastical changes and reinvent uh, what we would like to do. 
we knew what are our goals, but we didn't know any more what would be our means. But gradually we got forward and I'm very proud of uh, all project partners to be able to, at least in my opinion, to get uh, the results we thought we would get in the beginning. And even, even in some cases, I think uh, we even got further when we had more time to think what we would do now after the changes. And as a result of that, uh, I'm pleased to say that uh, we have had, in my opinion, very good uh, results different tools, reports, simulation models, uh, the ITS network has been established. So uh, here are just some examples of our project reports. Uh, they are easy to read and very practical and show uh, to different cities and partners, what are the key points that should be taken into account and what are the bottlenecks, how these could be uh, done and how could we apply the results of the project? On the other hand, we also know that it's that people do not like to read so much of the reports. So actually, we have also implemented quite much different tools and toolboxes uh, in our project. Uh, as an example, we could say uh, we have this participatory tools, uh, sustainable transport system self-assessment and uh, benchmarking uh, transport solutions interactive map of the best uh, practices and examples. Then also simulation models about green wave for cyclists without harming public transportation, optimized route and timing to harbor via lorry parking areas and so on. And also I would like to say that it's not all about reports or tools but also uh, we have had our earlier webinars and their recordings are still available. There are some good presentations that we unfortunately are not able to present everything here today. So I also uh, remind everyone to look at them if you're interested in the more uh, of the presentations related to our project themes. So I would like to say that we have achieved quite uh, much of what we thought in the beginning and Next, after the short coffee break, we will go deeper and deeper to the examples of the results. And we have 10 presentations from our project uh, partners showing practical examples of what have been done and achieved and how the process has been during this process project. Thank you from my side. Uh,